Hi guys, welcome back with me again, Adi Kurniawan Yusuf. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the next three ratio: asset management or efficiency, profitability, and also market value ratio. But to make you understand better, please watch financial statement analysis part one that talks about liquidity ratio and solvency ratio. Let's start. Asset management or efficiency ratio indicate how efficiently the firm use its assets. There are six asset management ratio that we're gonna discuss in this video. You can see here. How could we interpret each asset management ratio? Let's discuss it one by one. Inventory turnover. So inventory turnover shows company's efficiency in managing stock of goods. The formula of inventory turnover is cost of goods sold divided by inventory. Some other sources mention that inventory turnover equals to sales divided by inventory. But I personally prefer to use this formula, cost of goods sold divided by inventory. Cost of goods sold, actually we can find this in income statement. In this income statement, there is operating cost only, which is 2616.2. The cost of goods sold is included in operating cost. That's why I assume that cost of goods sold is $2,000. Divided by the inventory, the inventory is $615. So we can find that inventory turnover equals to 3.25 times. The data of industry, inventory turnover equals to 10.24 times. The higher the inventory turnover is, the more efficient the company in managing their stock. That's why when the company has lower inventory turnover, it means the company is less efficient in managing stock of goods. Second is inventory period. Inventory period is number of days the inventory is held. It is also called as day sales in inventory. The formula of inventory period is 365 days, the number of days in one year divided by inventory turnover. So it equals to 365 divided by the inventory turnover that we have found before 3.25 times. So we can find inventory period is 112.31 days. It means the average day of the stock of goods is held by the company before it is sold is 112.31 days. Let's see the industry. Inventory period of the industry is 35.64 days. We can see here the inventory period of the company is higher than the industry. It means the company holds the stock of goods longer than the industry. It shows that the company is not able to quickly turn its inventory into sales. Third is receivable turnover. So basically, it shows company efficiency in collecting its receivable. Receivable turnover equals to sales divided by account receivable. The sales we can find in income statement $3,000 divided by account receivable $375. So we can know that receivable turnover is 8 times. While the industry data shows that receivable turnover is 10.14 times. It means receivable turnover is lower than the industry. So the company is less efficient in collecting its receivable. The fourth one is receivable period. It shows number of day receivable could be received from the customer. We also call receivable period as day sales in receivable or day sales outstanding or DSO. The formula of receivable period is 365 days, the number of days in a year, divided by receivable turnover. It equals to 365 divided by receivable turnover that we find before 8. 
So the receivable period equals to 45.625 days. Let's see industry data. Industry data shows that receivable period is 36 days. It means the industry is quicker to collect the receivable, while this company is slower to collect its receivable compared to the industry. The next is fixed asset turnover. It shows how efficient a company generates sales from its existing fixed asset. So the formula is sales divided by total fixed asset. The sales is $3,000 divided by fixed asset $1,000. So we can find that fixed asset turnover is 3 times. Industry data show fixed asset turnover of the industry is 2.8 times. It means that fixed asset turnover of the company is higher than the industry. It shows that the company is more efficient in using fixed assets to generate sales. The last asset management ratio is total asset turnover. It indicates how efficient a company is generating sales from its existing assets. So total asset turnover equals to sales divided by total assets. Sales is $3,000 divided by total asset $2,000. So we can find total asset turnover is 1.5 times. But the industry shows that the total asset turnover for the industry is 1.8 times. So it means the total asset turnover of the company is lower than the industry. So the company is less efficient in using its total asset to generate the sales. Wow, it's so many! Be patient, we still have two other ratio, profitability and also market value ratio. Let's directly go to the fourth profitability ratio. It shows how profitably the firm operates and uses its assets. There are four ratios that we're gonna discuss. We can see here then profit margin, operating profit margin, return on assets or ROA, and return on equity or ROE. Higher profitability is better. First is net profit margin. Net profit margin indicates how much profit or net income that is generated as the percentage of sales. So net profit margin formula is net income divided by sales. Net income or profit is $117.5 divided by the sales $3,000. So we can find that net profit margin is 3.9%. Well, industry shows that the net profit margin is 5%. We can conclude that the net profit margin of the company is lower than the industry. So the company is less able to control its cost better compared to the industry. Next, operating profit margin. Operating profit margin indicates how much operating profit is generated as the percentage of revenue or sales. So the formula of operating profit margin equals to operating profit or EBIT divided by sales. The operating profit or EBIT is $283.8 divided by sales $3,000. So we can find that operating profit margin equals to 9.46%. But the industry shows that the operating profit margin of the industry is 10%. It means operating profit margin of the company is lower than the industry. We can conclude that the company is less able to control its operating costs compared to the industry. Third one, return on assets or ROA. ROA or return on assets shows how well company could generate profit from its assets. The formula is return on assets equals to net income divided by total assets. The net income is 117.5 divided by total assets $2,000.
we can know that return on assets or ROA equals to 5.875%. Industry show that return on assets of industry is 9%. It means ROA of the company is lower than the industry. So the company is less able to make maximum use of its asset for getting profit. Fourth is return on equity. Return on equity shows how well company could generate profit from its equity. So the formula is net income divided by total equity. The net income is 117.5 divided by $940. So we can find that ROE equals to 12.5%. The industry show that the ROE of the industry is 15%. It means return on equity of the company is lower than the industry. It shows that the company is less able to make maximum use of its equity to generate more profits. Wow, congratulations, you have learned four types of ratio. Now we're gonna learn about the last one that can give you consideration whether you should purchase or not purchase the stock of the company. This is market value ratio. Market value ratio indicate comparison between stock price and company fundamental condition. There are five ratio that we're gonna discuss. First is price earning ratio, second price to book value, third Tobin Q ratio, fourth PEG ratio, and the last one is EV over EBITDA ratio. For this five ratio, the higher the ratio is, the more overvalued the company is. For PER and PBV, we can simply say that the company stock is undervalued when PER is less than 10 and PBV is less than 1. Before we talk this more detail, we will learn first these two important terms book value and also market value. Book value is the real value of the company. So it is the value of company assets or equity based on the balance sheet. Well, for market value is the price of the assets and equity in the market. For example, this pencil. Actually, the real value of this pencil is $3. But the market want to purchase this $5. So the $3 is the book value, while the $5 is market value. Do you get the idea? Now let's talk about market value ratio one by one. First is price earning ratio or PER or PE ratio. PER measure the share price relative to its earning per share. So it means PER equals to stock price divided by earning per share. There is additional data here that the company stock price right now is $23.06 and there are 50 shares outstanding. First, we calculate the earning per share. Earning per share equals to net income divided by number of share outstanding. Net income we can find in income statement, right? $117.5 divided by number of shares outstanding, 50. It equals to $2.35 earning per share. Now, we can calculate price earning ratio. PER or PE ratio equals to stock price, which is 2306 divided by earning per share which is $2.35. So we can know that price earning ratio is 9.81 times. Industry, the PE ratio of the industry is 11.3 times. So we can see here that the PE ratio of the company is lower than the industry. Moreover, it is less than 10. We can conclude that the company stock is under value based on price earning ratio. So as the investor, we can purchase this stock. Now it's price to book value or PPV. 
PVV measure the share price relative to its book value. So PVV equals to stock price divided by book value per share. Let's find first book value per share. It equals to total equity divided by number of share outstanding. Total equity equals to 940 divided by number of share outstanding 50. So we can find book value per share is $18.8. So PPV equals to stock price divided by book value per share. 23.06 divided by $18.8. So the price to book value equals to 1.23 times. The PPV of industry is 1.7 times. So basically, PBV is more than one, but the PBV of the company is still less than the industry. So we can still conclude that this company is undervalued compared to the industry. As the investor, we can still purchase the stock. Third is price to earning to growth or PEG ratio. It measure PER relative to its earning per share growth. So the formula of price to earning to growth ratio is PER divided by earning per share growth. Let's find earning per share growth first. Earning per share growth equals to earning per share now minus earning per share last period divided by earning per share last period. We have found that earning per share right now is $2.35. It was known that the last year EPS is $2. So EPS growth rate equals to 2.35 minus $2 divided by $2. So the EPS growth rate is 0 0.175. Then we can calculate price to earning to growth ratio. It equals to PER divided by EPS growth equals 9.81 PER divided by EPS growth 0.175 it equals to 56.06 .06. just directly at the percent so it is 56.06 percent the PEG of the industry is 80 percent so PEG ratio is lower than the industry moreover it is less than 100 percent so we can conclude that the company stock based on PEG ratio is undervalued and the investor still could purchase this stock. Fourth is Tobin Q ratio. So it measures whether the firm's market value in relation to replacement cost of its assets. These are some data that will be used to calculate Tobin Q ratio. Price of the stock 23.06, number of share outstanding 50, market value of debt equals to market value of long-term debt plus notes payable. It is known that the market value of long-term debt equals to book value of long-term debt. That's why market value of debt equals to 750 market value of long-term debt plus 110 notes payable, it equals to 860 and total asset is $2,000. Let's go to the formula. Tobin Q formula is market value of equity plus market value of debt divided by total assets. Market value of equity equals to price times number of share outstanding. It means to $23.06 times 50 plus Market value of debt that we have found before 860 divided by $2,000. So topping Q equals to 1.0065 times. We can see here that the topping Q ratio is more than 1. It indicates that the market value of equity and market value of debt is more than its replacement cost of assets. Yet the industry showed that the topping Q of the industry is 1.5 times. It means the company topping Q is still lower than the industry or I can say that the company is still undervalued using topping Q ratio. So the investor still could purchase the stock. 
Last one, EV or Enterprise Value over EBITDA. It measure comparison between Enterprise Value or EV toward EBITDA. So the formula is simply Enterprise Value divided by EBITDA. Let's find the Enterprise Value first. Enterprise Value equals to Market Value of Equity plus Market Value of Total Debt plus Market Value of Other Financial Claim minus Cash and Equivalence. Market Value of Equity equals to Price times Number of Share. It equals to 23.06 Price times 50 Share Outstanding plus Market Value of Total Debt as same with Tobin Q, it is market value of long-term debt plus not payable. It equals to 750 plus 110. There is no market value of other financial claim in the question. And minus cash $10. So we can find that enterprise value equals to $2,003. Now let's find EBITDA. We need data from the income statement. EBITDA equals to EBIT plus depreciation. Do you still remember that? So EBIT is 283.8 plus depreciation 100,000. So EBITDA is 383.8 dollar. Okay, let's find the EV over EBITDA. Equals to EV or enterprise value 2003 divided by EBITDA 383.8. It equals to 5.22 times. We can see here that EV over EBITDA of the industry is 9.2 times. It means the company has EV over EBITDA lower than the industry. We can conclude that the company using EV EBITDA ratio is under value. So the investor could purchase the stock. Wow, congratulations! You have finished learning about 5 types of ratio. Liquidity ratio, solvency ratio, asset management or efficiency ratio, profitability ratio, and the last one is market value ratio. The last one. Even though we have calculated the ratio analysis, there are some limitations of ratio analysis. First is that it is difficult to develop meaningful set of industry average when company is multi-divisional. For example, the company is diversified. The company not only focus in one sector, but there are a lot of sectors that is handled by the company. Second, seasonal factor can distort ratio analysis. For example, coal industry is based on the price of the coal which is seasonal. Third is window dressing technique. So the company tried to beautify the income statement and other financial statement to attract the investor. It is possible as long as it doesn't violate the regulation. Fourth is that each company can have different accounting practice in creating the financial statement. So it can distort the comparison. The last one is that it is difficult to generalize whether a particular ratio is good or bad. For example, current ratio. If it is high, it is good. It means the company has ability to pay its current liabilities. But in other side, if it is too high, it is not good for the company because there is opportunity cost to invest that current asset. Have you got the idea of financial statement analysis? Yes, it looks complicated, but actually it is easy. So after you learn about financial statement analysis, right now you can analyze financial statement by your own.